Welcome to this presentation of the new functionality in the 2016 versions of Interform 400 and Interform NG. First at an agenda. What I'll go through is first of all some general information about our company and the things that are in common for the two main products. Then I'll go through the major changes and new features in Interform 400 and then I'll do the same for Interform NG. And just a side remark, Interform 400 and Interform NG are of course compatible with the latest versions of uh, the operating system for the AS400 or IBMI version 7 release 3 and also compatible with Windows 10. So first let's take a look at the general information. First of all we have had an update of our website www.interform400.com Not only the graphics has been updated but also the contents so it's definitely worthwhile to give it, go, give it a shot and go past our website for this new information. Then we have a new change of uh, our support tickets. We provide support for those customers that have a direct support agreement with Interform. So for these customers, what you have until now done is to send us an email with a link so we create a support ticket internally. But now we are providing this online ticket system where you can uh, dynamically uh, view the log online. The advantage with this is that uh, internally by, by Interform, uh, we, it's easier for us to to view the, the, the progress of uh, support cases and also to share various support cases between persons. And for you as a customer, it's also quite easy as you don't need any ID and, and password to, to remember. So let me just illustrate how it can be done. So from our website, you can select for customers and then submit a ticket. And when you do that, you just need to type in some relevant information about uh, your license, description of the problem. You can also attach files uh, to the report ticket and then click create a ticket. When you have done that, you will get an email back and the email will look uh, like this. And this email will have a link. So you can click the link and here you will see the complete log of this uh, support ticket. And of course you will get an email when there are any changes uh, for your support tickets. Next we have an upcoming survey. I'm happy to say that 82% of the requests for new functionality in the last survey are now a part of our products. So we think it's about time now to ask you again for an update. What would you like to, to see in the upcoming versions of Interform? And uh, where do you see the new the need for new functionality and is there perhaps something that we can do even better in our products. So look out for this upcoming survey. Interform has joined a partnership with uh, Zebra, Zebra the um, printer vendor and that helps us to be more compatible with Zebra printers. We have a shared roadmap so it means that we are informed uh, when uh, Zebra is doing future changes for the printers, then it's easy for us to implement these changes immediately. It also means for us that we have increased support uh, by Zebra, so if, if we meet some Zebra print, uh, printing challenges at customer sites, then it's easier for us to solve them. For you as a customer, Zebra can help you to size uh, the, the Zebra printers that you want to purchase, so you can be sure that you have the right size of printer and Zebra also offer a special buyback program for Interform customers. Then we have some module changes. First of all here we have the list of these module changes. So we have a new InterXML 400 module and with this module we are now able to generate much more advanced XML files. So if you set it up correctly you can uh, create XML files that are compliant with various uh, invoice standards. For instance, the German Zugfert, Norwegian EHF, 
OIO, XML, UBL, XML, and so on. Another module change is that we are now introducing advanced PDF. And this module is actually a merge between the previous embed PDF and PDF security modules. We have a new Movex connector module, which enables Movex customers to generate spoof files so that you can new use newer uh, Movex versions that are not able to generate spoof files with Interform 400. And then we have a, a rename, a relabel of the module Inter XML, which we are now labeling spool to XML 400, which is actually more precise in uh, to describe what this product actually does. But let me just go through each of these modules so you can see the, the, the complete details. So first of all, the new Inter XML 400 module. With the previous versions of Interform, you also get a, an XML generator, but this is able to generate much more advanced XML. If you're going with the SUGFAT uh, output, the SUGFAT um, XML files are actually embedded into a special PDF file, and these PDF files can easily be compiled with normal PDF uh, creation through command or through the, the menus and also for normal emailing. Apart from, from the XML generator, this module also includes support for VANs, value added network service, so that you can uh, so you can use this EDI functionality as well. So with that you will have a monitored folder where you can uh, put files that you want to transfer to other companies and you have a receiving folder for uh, files received from other companies. For the details of this uh, module you can set up uh, the, the contents uh, via various XPath functions so it means that you can do all sorts of functions to calculate the contents and the fields of the new XML file. You can use property files which you can compare with translation file. You can have a translation file for each language you want to output to so you can have a translation file for each uh, language depending on what language your, your customers would prefer. You can have rules to include a subtree in your output XML file depending on a specific uh, detail line in your input spool file. When you're done with uh, the creation of your XML file, you can also choose to validate the output XML to ensure that it's compatible with various standards. So with that you can refer to an XSD, which will simply reply if it's compliant or not. You can also run it through an XSLT transform and that will create a new uh, XML file which you can uh, validate with an XPath test. There's a special validation for EHF uh, XML files and that's also included in the product. When you generate your, your output XML file, the calculations can have cross-references. So you can have a, a field in one node in your output XML that refers to the contents of other nodes. But Interform will automatically take care of these dependencies so that it will calculate the nodes in the right order. As mentioned, we can create SUGFAT output file and these output files are actually a PDFA output file. So it means that the output PDF, in order to create PDFA, you need to link each uh, font number used with a Unicode soft font. And finally, <coughs> if you want to create a normal XML file, you just use the function X in AutoForms control. Uh, before I'll show you this, let me just present how it's actually implemented. So when we go into Interform, we have here in AutoForms control, we have the finishing definitions, and inside of that, we have like a, an XML definition here, and that is of type 09. And here, you can, for instance, set up the complete structure of your XML file. You can import an existing XML and import it here, so you can retrieve the complete structure and then update the various fields. And then when you are done with this, you can set up the validation that's set up here. So here you have an example of 
how we can validate this output in an XML file. The request to generate these special invoice XML files are often a request from one of your customers. So it could be that what you want to, uh, to create within the form is not just a single XML invoice type, but actually the different types depending on the, the country of your customer. So if you have a customer in, in uh, the no northern countries, uh, Scandinavian countries, they might want to have an OIO or UBL XML or EHF or for Norway, PA in Italy, Sugfert in Germany and so on, and there might even be customers that don't want a, an, a, an XML file but just a normal printed output or a PDF file. And for those, you can take your original invoice spoof file split it up depending on what kind of invoice type you want to generate and then you can choose to distribute your output XML file through for instance bands or email or print. Moving on to the next module that is the merge between embed PDF and PDF security. So embed PDF has the ability to embed files into an output file and PDF security has the ability to add a digital signature so you can create a PDF file as a legal document and it can also be used to encrypt and password protect PDF files. So let me just show you a few examples of that. So for embedding I have two favorite examples here. One is that you want to include in pictures of something that you have specially adapted to a customer's uh, request. So you might want to send uh, a picture embedded in your, your PDF file and these are actually hidden inside of the, the PDF. So when you click the link you open the, these attachments. So for that it gives you better uh, customer service that you can be more precise in, in confirming an order for instance. It can also be uh, if you want to send out uh, reminders for outstanding payments then it's easier to, to include the outstanding invoices directly in the request for, for payments. So you can include those and simply click the link uh, in the reminder to open this, these uh, invoices directly. So with this feature you can save uh, some money instead of manually going out and, and re uh, finding your, your invoices and attaching them and writing the letter each time you can, uh, you can do it automatically in this way. So that was a bit about the embed. Then for the PDF security we have two main uh, uses. One is to have a, um, a PDF file that is password protected and that is used by some banks that uh, send out uh, statements in an email so to ensure that uh, only the, the correct receiver will be able to read the contents they have encrypted and password protected those when you open the PDF file with the correct uh, password you can also restrict the usage so for instance in this case I have restricted the usage so it's not possible to print it out. Another use of PDF security is to add a digital signature so with this signature you have like a, a legal document so it's possible to prove who actually signed this document and it's possible to prove that no one has altered this document after it has been signed. So all of this functionality is now included in the advanced PDF module. And it means that any customers that, that have bought either of these modules in, in the older versions, they will get the complete advanced PDF module after an upgrade. And final thing to remark is that the uh, for Interform 400 we name it Advanced PDF 400 and Advanced PDF for Interform NG. And of course future uh, Advanced PDF functions will be added to this new module. We have the MoveX connector where brand new uh, versions of MoveX are not able to uh, create spoof files directly but we have a solution here where we're able to monitor uh, for new stream files created by MoveX. With this connector we can convert the stream files into spool files to be used in Interform 400. If there are additional data included in these stream files on the fly, 
then the connector will uh, send you a message so that you can map the new data into a new spool file and use that again in Interform. The module spool to XML, uh, spool to XML 400, is yeah, what I would call a bit of like black magic. It's able to convert an existing printer file into a new special XML printer file. And uh, if you are able to, to take the new printer file and replace the old one, for instance by placing the new printer file higher in the library list, then you can fool your original unchanged, completely unchanged program to create a new XML spool files, uh, which we can convert it into a normal XML file for processing in Interform NG. But let's move on to the core Interform 400 part. For, for, for that, we have a change here for the graphical designer. The data set that we sent back and forth between the graphical designer and uh, the host, or Interform 400, is now or it can be encrypted with the SSL. So it requires that you go to the Digital Certificate Manager on the I IBM I and do some configuration. And after that, all you need to do is when you sign on to activate this secure connection and then it's encrypted. Until now, this has not been a major concern since normally you would run the graphical designer on the local network or through some VPN connection where this data is encrypted anyway. Apart from this, we also have Im improved the uh, performance of the designer as we have now allowed the designer to use up to one gigabyte of uh, RAM so, and that simply makes the designer uh, faster. Then we have a change for the CONCAT which was introduced uh, a year ago. So the CONCAT is able to concatenate different texts from your spool file with some fixed text and then combine them into one long string which for instance you can present as a barcode. For Especially for barcode usage it has been requested that it could, should be possible to have like a fixed length on, of the text that you find in your your spool file and then use uh, preceding zeros to to make it a fixed length. And that is possible now so what you simply need to do is to refer to a fixed length of, of text and any preceding or trailing blanks will be converted into leading zeros if you select this trim leading zeros option. In this case I've also added the prefix and the suffix like this so when I map with the concat this information I will get this output. Then we have what we found was a bit of a challenge uh, at a few customer sites. We, we found that the customers they had suddenly had a standstill with this error message. And we found that the reason for this is actually that the customers had saved so many spool files, so they actually had some identical spool files. When you normally think of identifying spool files, all you need to, to know or to use is normally these five uh, parameters, then that's normally enough to uniquely identify a spool file. But for instance, the job number is uh, six digits, and when it reaches the max of 999999, then it, this counter will automatically reset and start all over again. So in that way, it's actually possible to have two spool files that are really are identical. And let me show you an example of that. So here we have two output queues, and these two output queues, they are placed on the exact same uh, IBM I, and if you compare the top spool files, they are actually matching uh, for the identification. It's the same spool file name, spool file number, the job name, the user, the job number, but the timestamp, the date and the time are different. So that's the only thing here that we can see makes a difference between these two spool files. So if we go back, then if I try to also in the operating system try to refer to these spool files only by these parameters, then I am uh, risk to get this error message, not only in Interform but also in the operating system. So the solution is to refer not only to these five parameters, 
but also the system name, the system where the spool file was created, and the timestamp of the spool file. So we have implemented this in all the commands in Interform where we are referring to spool files. We have also implemented this in our AutoForms control, automatic processing. So it's implemented all over except a few places and uh, these are listed here. So first of all we have a special command AFP to ASCII which is very seldomly used. That is also an option in AutoForms control. For that option and that command the duplicate spool files are not supported. We have an option G in AutoForms control where you can uh, archive a spool file in multi-archive that also only supports uh, unique spool files and uh, the option 8 in AutoForms control like below where we can call a program that with the old format only supported these five parameters but now we have added a new format 2 by which you will get the full identification of the spool file so we can uh, process even duplicate spool files. We have from AutoForms control also the possibility to call a, a, com uh, sorry, a program PRS copy in APF3812. This works very much like uh, copy management that creates multiple copies of each spool files and um, this is very seldomly used and I, I would actually recommend to use uh, normal copy management if possible but if you still want to use it you can use also here a parameter format 2 to support duplicate spool files. For installations where you have these duplicate spool files a simple workaround is to delete all the old spool files so we can still uniquely identify a spool file by these five parameters. But you can also use this edit functionality in Interform so we, you can also make use of, of duplicate spool files in the future. Then we have a improvement when it comes to upgrade. When you do an upgrade of Interform 400 what we're actually doing is a restore a, a new library and then re rename libraries so the old existing APF3812 library will be renamed into old. So it requires that we that there are no jobs uh, that has an object lock on, on the objects in this library during the upgrade. And we are now verifying that before we end the subsystems of Interform. So we go out, check out all jobs that has a lock on the the objects in Interform and any job running in our own subsystems they are ignored and then any job running outside they are listed in a list and we actually come out here with a, a message to say uh, you should now verify and ensure these jobs are, have, have ended or have released the, the lock before you can proceed. You can choose to ignore this warning but that the uh, is definitely not uh, recommended. So in this way you can ensure that the the window where your application is, is down, where, where the, the subsystems of Interform is down, that is a slimmer window and you can also be sure or, or much sure that the upgrade runs without any problems as soon as you hit uh, con that, that you confirm to, to go ahead with the upgrade then it really is, you have a successful upgrade. Another addition, uh, we introduced uh, last year the possibility to hold uh, emails so that is a very good idea if you want to test something for, for emailing you can create the full emails, you can go in the our um, email log, you can open the email and look at the contents, verify everything, uh, the attachment, and the receivers and so on and if you're happy with the email you can go in in the mail log and choose option 1 send and then you can just confirm these, these are ok and send them or with this new feature you can say for delete so you can delete those emails. Option 4 delete is only allowed for the emails that are held and, and never have never been sent. If you also want to, to delete the sent emails 
you should use the clear mail log uh, command of Interform, which is of course a very good idea to run on a on a regular basis. Then we have some other enhancements for for emailing. We can now refer to a, a group for the blind carbon copy uh, when when you send out an email through our email finishing definition. It's possible to add X header information in your in your outgoing email, so we can use this to identify that that email, and we have now the possibility to refer to the spoof file owner when you want to send out an email with the email finish definition. But this requires uh, that your user profile are registered in the system directory and also the name and the email address of these users. Let me just show you uh, these uh, facilities. So if we go out and back into Interform, we have here the possibility to send to an, an owner. So here for the owner, we can now say four, and that's it. And then you need to have set up your, your users in the system directory. For the uh, for the receiver, sorry for the blind carbon copies when when you select the, the sender you do it like this select option 8 and here in the bottom you can send a blind carbon copy not only to, to whoever uh, send it but you can choose now to send it to an email group which has been defined in Interform and finally we have the X header option so here for the X headers you can choose option 15 with some description of the X headers and you can use variables or constants to identify this email and this is actually included in the outgoing email so let me show you here so inside of the the outgoing email you have this hidden information so it's possible to see that or retrieve that with the program but if you look at the real email then it's not visible for the receiver so you can use these X header information, for instance, if you send a, a blind carbon copy to one of your own email addresses and uh, pick it up and use it for archiving, then you can perhaps use the X header information for, for indexing. You can also use the X header information if an outgoing email will bounce, bounce back and then you get the email back, then you can also look at the, these X header information. What we have found is that if the receiver replies to your email then this X header information is unfortunately not included in the reply back. So let's move on to Interform NG. So Interform NG is an alternative to Interform 400. The two products does more or less the same where Interform 400 takes spoof files as input, Interform NG mainly takes XML files but these XML files can, for instance, be converted from a normal spool file with a spool to XML module. There can also be various text formats that we are converted into XML. Apart from that XML-based data, we can also refer to uh, databases via an SQL statement to include additional information in our final output. For the installations, you might think of Interform NG to be mainly uh, installed on Windows, but it's also possible to install it uh, on the AS400 or IPMI, or whatever we call this platform, and it runs 100% natively uh, on the uh, AS400s as well. And we ha also have customers running uh, Interform NG on Linux. And here we have a couple of, of examples of customers running uh, Interform NG. German f company Flex has chosen to run Interform NG on the AS400. They had uh, free choice between Interform 400 and Interform NG, but chose that. Royal Arctic Line, a Danish company, is considering to leave the IBM I platform, so uh, they have chosen to actually install both Interform 400 and Interform NG on the same AS400 and gradually move their reports or output from Interform 400 into Interform NG 
and that is done with a slow, smooth uh, change, so that they can be sure that uh, everything runs smoothly. We have customers that run both products, as mentioned. We have customers that are uh, leaving the IBM I platform, and for 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 those customers, we have Interform NG as an alternative. So when they leave the platform, they can still be with us. We have uh, customers that uh, convert an existing Interform 400 installation to Interform NG, and of course, also we have new customers just arriving on in Interform NG. So for Interform NG, it's with uh, Interform 400 that we are uh, independent on the ERP solution that you run. So for Interform NG, we have of course also some, some changes. And one of the changes is that we are now able to print in reverse, exactly like we can do in Interform 400, and we're using the exact same functionality, meaning that if we print something twice in the same place, in ZPL, then it simply becomes white. If you want the same kind of output in all your outputs, no matter if you create a PDF or PCL or ZPL, then uh, you can define your, your layout like this, that you activate filling in your box, create a box, change the, the pin with which you're writing into white, and then you print the white text. For the command prefixes in the ZPL uh, data stream, these uh, prefixes they are actually configurable on your printers, so of course they are also configurable here in our product. Then we have some changes when it comes to uh, to the actual printer data stream that we are generating. Previously we had support for PCL, PostScript and ZPL, but now you can also select driver print if you're running Interform NG on either the win Windows or Linux platform. And with the driver print simply means that we're using the local printer driver that you have installed on the machine so that you can in principle print to any uh, printer as long as it has been installed and you have a fully uh, compatible uh, driver installed. For those customers that are considering to upgrade from an older version of Interform NG, there is one caution here. The way that we're handling metadata keys are, are now different. For those customers that are considering an upgrade to a 2016 version of Interform NG, there is here a, a bit of a word of caution. In the, the older versions of Interform, it handled the metadata keys a bit differently compared to the new versions. So previously, the first initial value you, you put into a metadata key was kept all the way through, so you couldn't overrule the value later. But now we have turned things around to make it more logical, so the final, the last time you assign a value to a metadata key, then that value will be used. So it means that uh, you can transfer, for instance, a metadata key value in your input and still have the possibility to overrule that in your workflow, in the template, on the output selection. Then we have a network or socket call option, and that was initially created for customers, for instance, running uh, an ERP system. So if you have a, a, a user sitting in an ERP system with a data into screen, they're entering some data, and then they want to verify the outcome of the, this data. Then in, instead of just sending out an email and hope for the best, what they can do is to click a, a, a button, then an XML file will be transferred to Interform NG with, with a handshake, and we will reply back immediately with the resulting PDF file, so the user can verify if the data is actually creating the, the correct valid uh, PDF file that they actually want to distribute after that. So uh, that is something that we have had for quite a while, but of course customers, they want more. So we have extended this feature. First of all, we have uh, added a test option in the web interface of Interform NG, so that you can go in here. 
select a special XML file, assign values to various metadata, and do a test and see what the outcome is. And for customers that are running this network option, we can now also trigger the workflow. So it means with the workflow you can generate not only a PDF file that we sent back, but we can archive the PDF, we can print, we can email, whatever you want uh, through the workflow. If you still want to, to have a, a preview, you can, uh, instead of getting a, a, the path and the file name back, you can also get the complete PDF file data. And uh, if you go with the path and the file name, we can also choose to assign a name to that file, so we can give it a more naming, uh, a, a better name that actually refers to the contents, so it could be invoice underscore, and you can even include the, the name of, uh, sorry, the, the invoice number in the, the PDF file. And finally, if we go with workflow, you might want still want a simple uh, PDF file back, and for, for, for that scenario, it's possible to use the, the value preview for, for the metadata called media type. Then we have some uh, uh, nice uh, new features for the designer, and especially there's a a new option here to dynamically include images so it can help you to include images of your, your product directly from uh, from an area where you have for instance a, a container of all images uh, of all your products this image can also be retrieved from the, the web if you have uh, internet access so let me just here show you exactly how we have done that so here in uh, in Interform NG, we have a an image, and this image actually refers not to an image we have imported earlier, because then we would need to select the image here, but instead we have this new feature where we can refer to the URL to the image here. So the URL here in this case is referring to a local file, but as I mentioned, it could be a file on the web as well. And in this case, I have a four-digit number here, and that four-digit number is actually retrieved from my XML file, and there are three different numbers, so it means this will uh, flex between pages here, so we have a different image depending on the contents of your XML. And that's what I've done here to concatenate initial string with the document uh, document number found in the xml.jpg. So that's one example of how you can use these uh, dynamic images. In the bottom here you can set up the size of this image. If you refer to an image that doesn't exist, you can actually here with this say that you have a like a fallback image and then this image will be used in case of this dynamic image doesn't exist. You can also say if you don't have any here, you will get an error message, uh, or you can even choose to ignore that error message with the error style if the image doesn't exist. After considering this way of dynamically including images uh, as a in our product, then we thought a bit more about it, and then you came to the conclusion you can actually also use this to refer to base uh, 64 uh, image, uh, images. So let me show you an example here. So what we have done here is that we have included an image directly in the input XML file and that is actually included as an image here in your output. So it's the same way except we are concatenating concatenating with, with a different text. So we have a base64 colon slash slash the base64 data stream with the extension of the image that we have just included. So with this base64 support you give even more uh, possibilities. But you can even use base64 images to uh, more and first of all you might sit here and, and think of what this base64 data stream actually is and it's not that complicated. What you can do is that you can convert 
your your various images into a base64 data stream which is just a long uh, string of text and you can do that uh, via various online tools and here is one example where you can upload your image say convert and then you have your your base64 data stream and that base64 data stream can be used as I showed you in the XML but you can also use it in an HTML file here we have one HTML and here the HTML is like a local image and instead of that we can choose to refer to the base64 image so here I have included the base64 image directly in my HTML and that means immediately when I open the uh, HTML file you see the image directly so these HTML files can be used for for emailing so you have the the email contents written in a HTML file so you can have a dynamic nice looking uh, email here with embedded images also in Interform NG exactly as you can with the Interform 400 there are other improvements to the graphical designer there are a possibility now to have a dynamic uh, secondary XML file we can run multiple designers you can even open a sub template and I'll show you in a second you can edit the included XML file and also the images even and uh, there's an improved uh, search in the designer and let me show you here so for the input we can choose to add additional files so we have a normally you, you probably only have a primary XML file but you can choose not only to have a, a secondary uh, named XML file with a fixed path but you can also create an XPath expression to build up the complete path of the, the other XML files that you want to include so it means that you can combine two completely different XML files so I have a, a primary XML files that have triggered the merge and that uh, information from that XML file can f for instance be used to build up the name and the path of the other XML file that contains additional information which is a completely different document perhaps and with this reference you can merge the two XML files and here in the, the output include data from both of the input XML files or not only two but, but uh, multiple XML files of course then you have the ability to run multiple designers and I have actually an example here so in this case I have a reference to another template where this included text comes from and I want to edit this text and, and I cannot do it directly here because it's of course placed in a different template but what I can do is I can choose to open the other template with this now I can click my text, say whatever text I want to add and click save and then it can take up to five seconds and then you have the updated output here if you're editing a sub sub template uh, something that is not directly referenced you might need to type this, uh, click this refresh uh, icon to make a, a new refreshment of, of all the, the references done here so the same edit and refresh is possible for your in input XML files and also for your images finally we have an addition here for the search so you can type in a search criteria and you immediately can jump through the places where this text is found so it makes it much easier to find the exact node in your XML file so you can use that for, for including that node, uh, that information in your output. Then we have an addition to the workflow actually for the output selection. What we can do here is that we can go into the web interface and normally you set up your configuration through the workflow and template selection where you can set up a lot of conditions to s uniquely select whatever XML file you want to, to work with then assign it to a special design 
and choose what kind of output you want if you want to select this or that printer. But that is how you would normally do and then uh, we have an extra layer here for the workflow output configuration. So with the output configuration you can overrule whatever you uh, stated earlier. So for instance if you have a lot of references here in your, your configuration to a specific printer which we name here old printer and if we imagine this old printer is now broken down so we need to overrule any selection of that printer to another one then we can have a, a condition here in our output configuration to say whatever printer you selected if you selected old printer before then we want to overrule it and use this printer instead so that's actually old functionality the new functionality is this new continue option to say that normally you c we can execute only one rule and as soon as one rule is selected then you can do only that but here with the continue other subsequent rules are also considered so with this continue option we can do much more advanced conditioning to say for instance if the file name is this then we want to select this special printer but still give the ability to overrule that decision down here to so say if yeah but that's okay but anyway no matter if what we selected here if the directory where the XML file was uh, found is test then we definitely want to select our test print instead so that's how you can use this continue option then we have support for finishing exactly like in Interform 400 and for for the PGL commands that we're using for, for, for that with these PGL commands you can do a lot of different things with the, your, your output you can for instance create commands for stapling you can include a special ID and a password so you can do secure printing printing to the memory of the printer and then if it's something confidential you can then go to the printer and type in your ID and password to let the printer know that it's okay to print this confidential information. You can add accounting information through a PGL command so that you can share the, the costs of a printer fairly so depending on which persons or departments that are using the printer. Some printers also have the ability to lock down color printing so that a special user ID and password is required in order to make the printer print in color. Finally, selection of output bin here might be done through a PCL, PCL command but uh, many printers also support a PG, PGL command to do that. Finally, it's not really PGL related but we can also do OMR means optical mark recognition these are lines or barcodes printed in the margin of the papers uh, to help these huge inserter machines to put your, your printed output into envelopes and that is something that we can configure uh, with the advanced functionality in the XPath language of Interform NG. We have a new logger for Interform NG which will increase the, the speed with which you can find uh, uh, the log uh, of, of uh, what have, have been handled and was there any problems so you can identify, you can confirm uh, whatever went okay and you can also find any problem areas quite easily. So that's actually it. The German manual f at this current time is not available yet for Interform 400. It is very close to being there. Uh, for those that saw this presentation, you were asked to do a, a review. There will be links to this uh, presentation uh, on YouTube. Remember to look out for the upcoming survey. And of course, feel free to contact uh, me or my colleagues at, uh, at Interform. Uh, if you want a proof of concept of any of the new modules or, or, or of, of any other of the new functionality. Thank you and bye.